Hey guys, how you doing? I'll go Steph here. So I'm going to give you some advice, my best advice based on my 30 years of experience writing professional code. I even have a bunch of notes. So if you, my camera focuses, you got the notes right here. All right. So, uh, number one, you have to change with the times. You have to change with the times. I've been around the game as a developer long enough to see several significant changes in the software development world. And I've seen some people react to it negatively where they're like crying over the fact that the technology that they've been used to for a while is fading in popularity. Although some technologies will last a lot, a lot longer than you'd think. PHP comes to mind, for example. Um, yeah, so some people will bemoan the fact that technology is changing and other people, smarter people are thinking about, okay, we got a new technology that's rising. Therein lies the opportunity. So today, of course, that's low code, no code in AI development, whether you do AI assisted development or you build an AI first application. So I, for example, recently trained a custom GPT, which is a AI first application. It's very good. I call Brad Fit, my AI fitness coach. Very powerful. It is able to do things that I wouldn't have been able to do uh, without AI. So anyway, change with the times, go with the flow. This is where the opportunity lies. I actually believe as a developer, as developers today, you have the greatest opportunity that I've ever seen. Uh, unbelievable opportunity because of AI. So don't let it freak you out. All right, tip number two, develop soft skills. Develop soft skills. What are soft skills? Soft skills is the ability to communicate, to have empathy, empathy for others, to write well, to be concerned about other people's concerns around you, whether it be coworkers or your bosses or your clients. I have read reports, uh, more than once, where when they talk to recruiters uh, for programming job, development jobs, and so forth, the number two thing that they look for is whether or not the individuals, the prospects, are easy to get along with, can communicate well. Because at the end of the day, we're all humans, right? Well, most of us anyway. And uh, we have to exist with these people. So you got to ask yourself, would you hire a jerk? Do you want to be around a jerk or a person you just don't, you're not comfortable with uh, every day? Do you want to have to interact with them? The answer is no. So you have to develop what are called soft skills. These are communication skills, being a little empathic, uh, thinking, uh, think about when you interact with other people, you say to yourself, how can I make their lives easier? Right? As opposed to being self-centered. Try to think about how to make their lives easier. And I'm not saying you let them walk all over you and so on. But you know, you got to make their lives a little bit easier. You do that, they're going to want to work with you. So when you're looking at programming languages, Java, C Sharp, JavaScript, PHP, Python, TypeScript, whatever, you have to think of them as tools. They're not your teams. They are not your uh, significant others. They are not uh, your religious disposition. They are the, they're just tools. And you have to understand, any experienced developer will tell you this, as you become more and more experienced, as you work on more and more projects, you will be tilting from language A to B to C to D. So I know some people have their favorite languages as I did uh, at one point or another, but this will change over time. And what I've learned is, yes, Java has some great things, and C Sharp has some great things, and JavaScript has some great things, and Ruby has nothing good about it. Um, you just got to look at the languages as tools, and you got to become a little bit agnostic about them. Because what you're going to find is, depending on the job, one language will be good, one language will be bad. So languages are tools, and don't become married to them. They're not your religion. And so you move, you pivot, you move, you pivot. One of the things I've been teaching for years is uh, don't look for code to write. I remember when I was a junior dev, I used to feel like I was cheating if I used an IDE or a code editor. I used to write 
for years I wrote my code with Notepad, which in you know, when I finally switched to a code editor and then an IDE, I felt like an idiot because I wasted so much time. And using IDEs and code editors made me a developer, a better developer. And I learned a lot more quickly. So yeah, um, don't go looking for code to write. Some people think that if they use a library or they use AI or they use a low, a low code, no code environment, as opposed to writing the code from scratch that somehow they're cheating, you're not. Remember, when you're using a web server, you're using other people's code. When you're using a database server, you're using other people's code. When you're using a high level language, when you're using a JavaScript, you're using other people's code. Using Python, you're using other people's code. So get, get rid of that hang up where you feel that somehow you're cheating because you're uh, using, you're not coding. What I, and I've taken several projects to market besides doing a bunch of work for clients. The first thing I do when a project is uh, put in front of me or I decide I'm gonna create something, the first thing I do is I look to see if anybody else has written anything. Number one, see if anybody else has libraries that can assist me in my uh, function, in, in what I want to express in code. I'm not looking for code to write because trust me, there's plenty of opportunity. There will be plenty of opportunity for you to write code and to uh, solve complexity. So yeah, don't look for code to write. So use libraries, use AI, use, use low code, use no code tools. At the end of the day, Developers develop, and they use all the tools at their disposal to develop, whether it be programming languages, libraries, frameworks, AI tools, AI-first development, uh, AI uh, traditional development assisted by AI, et cetera, and so forth. WordPress. I know some people who make very good money just putting out and maintaining WordPress sites. So there you go. That's my advice based on 30 years of experience. Don't discount uh, the second thing I mentioned, and that's the uh, soft skills. Soft skills are huge, huge. I remember one of my mentors told me he was worth about, in the, at the time, he was worth about 50 million. So uh, in today's numbers, that would be like a much higher, anyway, he was a very successful guy. And he's told me, I'd rather hire a moderately talented person who is easy to get along with, I'd rather hire that person than the superstar, the hotshot, who's an asshole. There you go. I'm Uncle Steph. I teach people everything you need to know about software development. I've been doing this professionally. We're making money with it since 94, 95. It's been so long, I forget. I've been coding so long that I had my hair for most of my coding experience. So imagine that. All right, if you want to learn how to code, if you're a total beginner, I have standalone courses that are super inexpensive. I also have a full-blown mentoring program where you have access to everything uh, for uh, the best price I've ever put at. If you want to learn soft skills and how to manage your emotions, in fact, control your visceral impulses, which is super powerful, check it out, Lizard Wizard. And if you want to get fit, which I advise that you do, that's my other piece of advice. That's the last bonus advice. Developers sit, or sit around a lot. So you have to get up multiple times a day, do a little exercise. So I go get coffee at a local coffee joint and people would ask me, why do you get coffee at the coffee joint? Why don't you just make it at home? And the reason is because I want to have a destination, a place to go to so I can stretch my legs, so I can walk. I try to get in eight to 10,000 steps a day. I try to do micro exercises throughout the day. Um, yeah, especially as you get older, uh, being in shape, eating clean food is huge, super important. And so it's better if you're younger and you're watching this, better to start developing those instincts, those habits, those healthy habits, in terms of constantly moving, exercising, stretching, uh, those habits of eating, reaching for healthier foods to ingest, but unhealthy. You do that, I will serve you well. All right, thanks for watching. If you disagree with anything I happen to say on this video, please feel free to comment below. If you like this video, let me know if there's any particular subjects or questions you want me to cover. 
Don't worry. Everything I talk about, everything I say, any point of advice I give you is based on decades of experience. I don't address things that I don't know. Uh, I consider that uh, malpractice. When people comment about things they don't really know about, mm, not cool. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>